I'll introduce myself. Hi. I was here last year um, also doing a panel and presenting FAUDA. This year we're proud to have the conductor. Um, my name is Donna Stern. I head up EF Studios. We're the distributor and producer of the conductor. And tomorrow night we also have another screening that you're most welcome to attend of On the Spectrum. So it'd be great to see you guys. And we're happy to have Sheila Hass, the star. Um, Now it's working. Uh, talking about Fauda, I just produced another movie by the director of Fauda, uh, Asaf Bernstein. Asaf season Bernstein. one. The director of season one. The director of season one. True. Right. Um, called Look Away. But that's besides the point. We're here to talk about TV. And... Um, so I can tell you that uh, I've been in LA for many years, meeting with a lot of people in the industry. And the last few years, something has changed. And when I come in and I talk with my accent, they say, oh, you talk like um, a Gal Gadot. I love her. <laughs> and, um, and so suddenly Israel is in. It's like a big thing. And I go to meetings and say, so you're from Israel. Fauda, Fauda, how, how did you do Fauda? And do you have any content? We want content from Israel. That's what we want. That's what we're looking for. And I'm like, well, you know, it's all kind of taken because Keshet International. And, you know, it's like um, the Israelis are, and I want Dana to, to talk about that. But it's... Um, I feel bad I don't sound like Al Gadot now. I should put on a... Uh, like a <laughs> I should try to put on an Israeli accent. <laughs> yeah, when bring I speak it on. English. I didn't know that was <laughs> trendy now. Um, but that's so yeah, Dana, tell us a little bit about why... And we'll get to Shira, who, who of course... She is the star. Um, but that's true, and, and I think we've been sensing it, especially in this festival. We've been participating for about um, two years now maybe three with um, TV series. Before, that wasn't a thing. I mean, film had always kind of transcended and, and done relatively well internationally, but the last few years, um, going back probably to Entreatment, uh, wow, over 12 years ago, I'd say, yeah. um, and all through Homeland and obviously Fauda, uh, and there are multiple other examples uh, that we can give, Israeli television really come into its own. And you know, I, I know those meetings, I take those meetings, um, it's great to be Israeli and working in television right now. It's literally, we have people kind of right. lining up and saying, well, what else do you have? You guys right. are so creative. You have such wonderful ideas. Why is that? And I, I, think, I think that what they're excited about is, A, um, how smart, intelligent, deep, and creative the Israeli um, writers and creators are. That's an original. That's one. But two, they know how to do... Um, things in low budget. <laughs> and, um, and so, and that's very attractive because a lot of, like in treatment, one room, one actor and a few guest stars, right? And, um, and, and I always go to Benini's Oscar speech. I don't know if anybody remembers when he did Life is Beautiful. Do, do you remember his speech? He came on stage and he says, I want to thank my parents for poverty. <laughs> so sometimes the limitation makes you more creative. Um, that, that's totally true. I think this is a wonderful example of that. You know, we do personal stories. We do stories that come from within. This is a very personal story for the creators behind it. Um, it talks about growing old. It talks about um, disease. Um, it, it talks about you know, what your relationship is with your parents. We don't have budgets to do great sci-fi shows, great um, horror thrillers. So we have to write about what we know and what's personal and what can make it on screen on a budget. And I think that's what we're finding right now, a real audience for that, not just locally, but internationally. Um, there seems to be an appetite for stories that kind of are real, that aren't contrived, that aren't made up in some you know, um, hospital, this emergency room, <laughs> no dissing anyone who's working on a medical show, um, or a cop show. These are stories about real people and real lives, and I think that's what we're finding success with. 
And I think that most of them are serialized. So you know the difference between serialized and episodic, right? So networks usually have, like you said, like the hospital, and every week you have the disease of the week. It's always uh, lupus, by the way, right? Oh, I'm a hypochondriac. <laughs> that was House. That was like eight seasons, and everybody ended up having lupus. Um, and the, the, a lot of the Israeli shows are serialized, so there is like a whole season is following one one continuous one, one narrative um, one narrative and today with amazon and hulu and um, netflix and all the cable shows that's what they're looking for they don't look for the episodic that much they're looking for those narratives so, do you want to tell us more because you're selling them right we're trying to <laughs> doing okay uh, by the way this um show is already sold in the u.s i mean we're only on episodes three in wow. israel and it's already pre-sold we actually sold it off the script um, Who, who's going to make it? This one, yes. Well, not, yes. Yes, it's sold. <laughs> There's more than one buyer. <laughs> not everything goes to Netflix. Um, it's a little premature to talk about where it's going to go, but this is actually sold as an adaptation. So well, there'll be a U.S. remake of this. But, yeah. So, That's amazing. Yeah, which is, which is awesome. Um, and again, you know, it's, it, it is a great time. Um, we, we have... In addition to Fado, we've sold um, Tagad, which is a very Israeli show. Which one? Tagad. I mean, uh, I can't get more Israeli than that. But that's going to be on Paramount Network with Ron Howard directing. Roberto Mkhabib wrote it. It's going to wow. be called yeah, what it's about? Whiskey. It's uh, about a medical army unit. Oh, right. I, I know about it. Uh, yeah. We have another show called Your of Honor, course. which is going to go on Showtime, um, probably shooting early next year. We had another show canceled yesterday, but at least it made it on air, called The Good Cop, uh, with Tony Danza and Josh Groban. That's based on one of our formats. Uh, on the Spectrum, if you'll see tomorrow, that's Beautiful, also that's so beautiful. Also it's brilliant, being remade actually. Here. So there's a lot of production going on, and so that's just us. I mean, there's, there's, we have many counterparts working in the industry here that have sold multiple shows. But that's are you doing it now with um, Keshet? Or no, with Keshet International, or just? No, we do our own. But um, I think Sheila could probably... Yeah, Sheila, um, how do you see Israeli actors and yourself because suddenly you all have a stage in the United States um, through the cables? How is that affecting your career? Uh, well, you can definitely... I mean, the first international project Hi. The first international project I did was actually, it was, yeah, three years ago, it was the, the Zookeeper's Wife, and you can also definitely feel that doors are being opened for foreign actors, and I mean, there are amazing actors and actresses in Israel, and it's amazing that these doors are being opened, and it's optional for everyone, and it's amazing, yeah, I'm very happy to be here and to talk about it, of course. Right, even uh, the... the um Israeli movie, um, Bikurat is Moret, yeah. the, the, the band's, the band's visit. right, the band's visit, is now on Broadway with an Israeli actor. So that's yeah. that's a complete new angle on opening the you know yeah the Israeli accents are in. <laughs> Anybody has any questions or Dana? Do you want to say something? Um, no, I just, oh, we can hear it better a little bit. But uh, I was going to ask you, first of all, it was great um, sitting and, and listening to you guys really get into the show, right? We didn't realize we made a comedy, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we, thought we, we thought we were producing a drama. But um, that's the fun part about doing festivals, because television is such a personal experience. Um, you know, people at best sit in the living rooms. At worst, they sit with their phone. And um, having an opportunity to show it to an audience, so it's a new genre for us. So thank you for um, letting us know we made a comedy. But what was it? What was it like for you being on this show? This is your second series with the same creator. Yeah, the so. creators of Stissel, uh, the producers as well, and the directors and the creators, and it was amazing. It was very uh, different character than what I'm, I used to do. I mean. Because I feel like other characters that I did are characters that are, very, are going through a journey and they are losing their innocence in sort of way. And this character and maybe the whole series 
she's not losing anything. She's kind of finding it again. And this is amazing. And I remember a quote in the next few episodes, no spoilers, I swear, that <laughs> Noah is talking with Odi and he's explaining her how to sing the song and he tells her, sing the song with the innocence of, ch of a child. And she tells him, but wife, I'm not that innocent. And he, he said to her that there's no such thing. We are all innocent and for some reason and through the years we're trying to hide it. And this is what this TV is about. It's, it has so much truth and innocence inside of it. And this is how people are connecting cause, and music as well connects us so all. Can we talk a little bit about the singing? Because there's a lot, yes. there's a song in every episode. Yeah, well, which, it, was, it was fun. I mean, singing for me it was always like, Part of me, and this was something I enjoyed to do, and it was, it was amazing. And also, these are very like classic Israeli songs, so it just was an honor to sing them. Really, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm yeah. sure you recognize yeah, yeah. the music, right? It's yeah. an integral part, yeah, and a fun part cool. of the show. Yeah, it and you was. did your own singing too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was, um, so that was a fun experience going back to. Definitely. Do you want to tell a little bit about what happens to your character? Um, I hope you don't hate me. Uh, after, I didn't know they were going to, sh to show also the second episode, so when I heard about it, I was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> well, um, Cause you're a main yeah, force. She, in, mm -hmm. I don't want to spoil too much, but she will go through some uh, of things through the episodes, and she will, I mean, her relationship with Gil, with boy will develop and she'll find some truth and innocent and perhaps love. Ha da da. <laughs> to BD. <laughs> but she does. Yeah. And um, so we're, we're literally on episode three in Israel. What has been the reception like on this? Oh, it was amazing. Home? Great responses. I mean, people really enjoy this show and it makes them also laugh and also and all the range of emotions possible, and there are great reviews as well. And it's yeah. a great cast. I mean, you great guys, cast. Yeah, you, you guys really lucked out on, yeah. on getting the best of the best. Leo was Very supposed lucky. to be here tonight. He yep. was. Um, was he part of developing? No. no, as far as I know. No. So how do you sell it? What's your pitch for a show like that? We go into a room and they go, <laughs> "What else do you have?" <laughs> it's like we have a new show. Okay, we'll take it. Um, it's getting easier and easier, seriously. Um, it, it's weird to say that because this is a long and, and lengthy process usually, uh, but so much is being done in the country, um, in film, and as you mentioned, you know, musical theater, um, obviously in television, that it's getting easier. I think people find, first of all, there's a great surge in, in production here on, for television. There's a lot of buyers, a lot of opportunities. And um, I think what they like about what we're producing is really the personal aspect of the story. And a lot of the response that we get is, wow, we haven't heard that before. So I think it's the originality of it, it's the personal part of it. And then they go, how much did you make it for? <laughs> and your writer wrote the whole thing? That's another thing. Our writers actually write every single one of these episodes. The director, and the director will direct every single one of these episodes. That, to them, is mind-blowing. Yeah, production here is very, very different. Um, yeah, it's actually um, here. They, they have a writer for each episode and a director for each episode. Well, they actually have a writers, they have multiple writers for each episode. That's true. And to do it in Israel where, A, I think that it adds to the quality because you see a vision. Well, we just can't pay so many writers. <laughs> we can only true. pay one. But it also brings a real vision. It's almost like shooting a feature. Right. And it's also, and because you do that, you, is everything okay? Oh, oh that is. Um, um, you, you, you write all the episodes ahead of time, so you can shoot it like a long feature, and that's why you can make it much cheaper, rather than, than shoot it per episode. Yeah, so I think really it's the response. People are responding to the person, um, the personal aspects of the storytelling, and the fact that they're really set in very different and diverse worlds. Um, I, I don't think there are many shows about Alzheimer. In fact, I think it's one of, <laughs> it's not a topic many people, you know, if this was in America and somebody said, oh, I want to develop a show about my aging parents, the notes for the network would well, be, Well, in oh. 911, 
actually. Yes. Uh, did anybody see 911? Yeah. yeah. So the, the mother of one of the characters has Alzheimer and she takes care of her. And she, you, you saw it? No, I haven't seen it. Yeah. This, so. Is it the second season that's just started? Or the first? Um, is it the second season anyway, or first season? But, um, first season, yeah. But this is, this is the main yeah. story in yeah, this yeah. one. No, I'm not comparing. No, no, no I'm this just is, saying, yeah. yeah, so. Sure. I think some of the notes here would have been you know, more restrictive, whereas we have much more freedom to yeah. do that. And once we do, we're like a mini experiment. And then they go, oh, it can be done. And therefore, the adaptations of it. So is it easier for you to sell a show after it has been shot? So now you're here selling, selling the show, but you already have a proven format yes. that, it's that much, got It's much reviews. easier to sell something that's already been produced and people can watch versus what we call a paper format, which is somebody writing down an idea, a development, maybe a script. Um, definitely always easier to view. Sure, you want to move to America? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, no. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't stay in Israel, but I, I love the fact that I can travel and be everywhere. <laughs> Keep it that way, yeah. <laughs> are there any questions for us before? Oh, they are, over there. Yes. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ten. Ten episodes in the series. So far. We haven't decided yet. We usually let um, series run their entire course and then we make a decision about future seasons. It's going to be reformatted in the U.S., yes. It's already sold. Um, the finished tape hasn't, we haven't gotten to the discussions yet because it's so very, very new. So there wasn't any tape to show. What? Well, we're distributing it. Um, there's a production company involved as well. But we're not going to say who. It hasn't been formally announced yet. This is just among us. Read it tomorrow and write it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Has? Oh, I thought like acting book. Okay, Has is in Czech. It means rabbit. <laughs> Fun fact, yeah. <laughs> I'm Czech. Yeah. Oh. Um. Well, <laughs> in, in that case, I, I mean, I knew the creators and I knew the director and the producers, so it was very open. You, you worked on two seasons yeah, of before. Yeah, before Shtisa, I worked with them, so it was very open, and we did work together on that. I wasn't part of the writing, of course, but it was very open. Uh, but usually, uh, I mean, you get the role after the whole series or the whole movie has been written already, but... It depends. It, I guess it's everywhere like that. I mean, it depends on the people you work with. If people are willing to listen, it's the same, I guess. But here it was very open and an amazing experience. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I think we're good. Thank you very much. Thank you.